This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Corner. Muhammad Ali is universally recognized as one of the greatest heavyweight champions of all time, and not without good reason. Many observers actually consider Ali to be the greatest heavyweight during the long, rich history of boxing's marquee weight class. So it seemed fitting here to begin this new Top 5 Notable Win series by starting with Muhammad Ali. And with Ali, his five biggest signature victories generally tend to be agreed upon. So let's go through a brief chronology of those five wins. On February 25, 1964, at the Convention Center in Miami Beach, Florida, 22-year-old Cassius Clay went up against heavyweight world champion Sonny Liston. Clay was a sizable underdog entering the contest, and going in, many observers believed that Liston would be able to exploit Clay's perceived technical flaws. The champion charged out of the gate aggressively, but Clay proved to be a very elusive target. Clay was utilizing his quick feet and athleticism to float out of harm's way, and early on he was already beginning to gauge Liston's speed and reflexes in order to find his range. Liston was having difficulty landing anything, and Ali began working his jab while remaining elusive. As the action progressed, Clay had began dominating the battle of range and distance, and he started to become bolder with his quick snappy jab. Liston was simply bamboozled by the tremendous speed and stellar positioning of Cassius Clay. It was a beautiful textbook display of the art of hitting without getting hit in the realm of the sweet science. Try as he might, Liston just couldn't find his range. Clay was peppering him from the outside, and he was starting to fire off more combinations whenever the opportunity surfaced. It was a defensive display of mastery, mixed with an awkwardly quick offense, and in a very real way, this personified the very concept of float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Liston had a few spots of success here and there, and his best moments came in round five when Clay was suffering from impaired vision. But the champion was never able to capitalize, and he never gained any real momentum. By round six, Clay's vision had returned, and he picked up right from where he left off, once again in complete command of the range and distance. Sonny Liston failed to answer the bell to begin round seven, and the fight was over. Cassius Clay had just become the new heavyweight champion of the world. On May 25, 1965, at the Central Maine Youth Center in Lewistown, Maine, heavyweight world champion Muhammad Ali put the title on the line in an immediate rematch against the man he beat to become champion, Sonny Liston. Ali came out a little faster to start the rematch, but a familiar pattern soon emerged, where Ali was using his feet and athleticism to dictate the range and distance. Liston tried pressing forward, but he was unable to close the gap against Ali's elusive tactics. Late in the opening round, Ali landed a quick counter right that floored the former champion. Referee Jersey Joe Walcott lost track of the timekeeper's count, and Liston wound up getting up. They fought on for another 18 seconds or so, Ali was all over him, and Walcott called a halt to the action. Muhammad Ali won by first round knockout in a fight where he landed what was arguably the most controversial punch ever thrown in boxing history. On January 28, 1974 at Madison Square Garden in New York, New York, the now 32-year-old Muhammad Ali had a rematch against fellow former world champion, Smokin' Joe Frazier. By this point in his career, Ali had suffered two losses professionally, one recently against Ken Norton, and the previous loss was against the man before him now, Joe Frazier. This bout represented a crossroads fight for both former champions at this stage. The action began with a heightened level of intensity as both boxers were looking to re-familiarize themselves with one another. Ali was looking to move on the outside to keep Frazier at range, and Joe was looking to close the gap and work on the inside. Ali held the tactical advantage in the early going, and he was effectively able to keep Frazier outside using his superior rhythm. Joe began finding his range a bit better at times, and he was launching some mean leather whenever he got into position. But Ali was able to stay on his toes, 
and controlled the distance throughout the earlier rounds of the contest. Frazier began finding his groove during the middle portions of the fight, and Ali appeared to be getting fatigued with a little less bounce in his step. Frazier began finding the mark with his left hook with some regularity. Ali began tying Joe up on the inside to neutralize his offense. Ali was still having success when he was able to keep things towards center ring, but Frazier was frequently able to bull his way inside and inflict damage. Ali was trying to fend off Frazier's attacks as best he could, and Ali began reasserting himself during the later third of the match. The final round saw a lot of fireworks where each guy was having his moments in this rugged battle of distance and positioning. When Frazier bobbed and weaved his way inside, he usually inflicted some type of damage. And when Ali could keep things center ring, he was firing off quicker punches from the outside and often catching Joe on the way in. At the end of 12 rounds of action when the dust had settled, Muhammad Ali had been awarded a unanimous decision victory. On October 30th, 1974 in Zaire, Muhammad Ali challenged Big George Foreman for the heavyweight championship of the world. Big George was viewed as a sizable favorite entering the contest, and few observers believed that Ali would be able to withstand the menacing power of George Foreman. Foreman started the fight patiently, stalking after the former champion, but Ali was using his speed and athleticism to tee off on George from the outside. Foreman was having difficulty coping with Ali's speedy hands, and he was also having a lot of difficulty finding his punching range. Ali was slipping and sliding, moving and grooving, and Foreman was lumbering forward, trying his best to pin Ali up against the rope so he could unload. But Ali was very resourceful, and he started using a unique blend of movement, crowding, space, and ring smarts to neutralize most of Foreman's attacks. This enabled Ali to better absorb Foreman's raw strength, both in terms of sheer physicality and also in terms of punching power whenever something caught his guard or snuck through. To his credit, Foreman's pursuit was relentless, but he was having difficulty getting leverage on his punches. Ali was twisting and turning and blocking and dodging, and he was also utilizing the ropes to great advantage. All of this served to lessen the sting of Foreman's onslaught, where Big George was looking to land shots anywhere and everywhere he could. And all the while, despite being very defensively attentive, Ali was fighting very effectively off the ropes, and his superior hand speed was giving Foreman fits. Ali was picking and choosing his spots very wisely, and his awkward rhythm seemed to have George confused and unsure. Foreman continued trying to press his attack forward, but he couldn't cope with the hand speed. Ali was stinging him with a slew of blistering quick sharp flurries. Slowly but surely, Ali's resourceful blend of tactics began wearing Foreman down, both mentally and physically. Anytime Foreman did manage to land any hurtful shots, Ali almost immediately fired back effectively. In round eight, Muhammad Ali unloaded with a crisp combination that sent Foreman staggering down to the canvas. Foreman was down, and he would not be beating the count. It was an eighth round knockout, and Muhammad Ali had just regained the heavyweight championship of the world. On October 1st, 1975 in Manila, heavyweight world champion Muhammad Ali defended the title in a rubber match against former world champion and longtime rival, Smokin' Joe Frazier. This fight started in familiar form, with Ali looking to keep Joe out at range and Frazier looking to work his way inside. The big difference this time that became apparent pretty quickly is that Ali was no longer as mobile as he had been the previous two times these two met. Ali didn't have as much bounce in his step, and that enabled Frazier to find his optimal punching range with much greater frequency. Ali was still doing the better work during the early portions of the fight, but Frazier was working the body well and having his moments. Ali was often getting off first, but he was also spending a lot of time backed up against the ropes and Frazier was effective when it came to shutting down the distance. This resulted in a lot of explosive displays of fireworks, where both boxers were landing an onslaught of sharp stinging shots. In the middle rounds, 
Frazier's body work started paying dividends and Ali appeared to be slowing down. This enabled Frazier to start finding more openings for his left hook. It was an exhausting pace for both boxers and each man was giving as good as he took with a lot of mini shifts in momentum in a back and forth flow. Frazier was mixing his offense up well and Ali was having difficulty fending him off. But at times, Ali was still able to fire off effectively when he had the room. These two men were beating the living hell out of one another and displaying unbelievable heart and determination in the face of adversity. The brutal nature of this grueling affair never subsided. Ali and Frazier were both literally giving it everything they had and they were both absorbing tremendous amounts of punishment for their sterling efforts. Ali seized control of the momentum in round 13 and he began teeing off on Frazier with pinpoint precision. By round 14, both of these battle-tested warriors were hurt and exhausted. But amazingly, Ali still had a little bit more left in the tank, and he was able to put together a series of nice shots that appeared to have Frazier badly hurt. Before the start of the 15th and final round, Frazier's corner stopped the fight. It was a 14th round stoppage victory for Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali had an amazing career, and these five fights alone certainly do not tell the entire story of his greatness. But for me, these are the five wins that greatly helped define Ali's greatness. The rivalry with Sonny Liston, winning the epic trilogy against rival Joe Frazier, and beating Big George Foreman against all odds to regain the heavyweight championship. These are the five victories I believe to be his greatest. If I had to rank them in terms of significance, the victory over George Foreman is the one that tops the list. Ali was physically past his best, people were expecting Foreman to beat him down savagely, and Ali used everything at his disposal, physically and mentally, to break Foreman down. Number two I would have to say is the first Liston fight when Ali first became heavyweight champion. This is another fight where Ali was a big underdog going in. Number three for me is a bit of a toss-up, but I'm going to say the rubber match victory against Frazier. That fight was just so brutal, and Ali dug down deep and after having taken a ridiculous amount of punishment, this enabled him to win the trilogy with his biggest rival in his career. The number four I would say has to be the rematch with Frazier. That second Frazier fight is the forgotten one of the trilogy, but for Ali's career, this was a very important win. He had recently lost against Ken Norton, and he'd already previously lost to Frazier. If Ali doesn't win this fight, then a lot of people might be saying that George Foreman and Joe Lewis are the best heavyweights ever. And then number five, the Liston rematch. That fight's always had an aura of controversy around it, but I'm inclined to include this match over, say, one of his victories where he overcame adversity or winning the heavyweight championship for a then unprecedented third time against Leon Spinks. For my two cents, when I think of Muhammad Ali's five most notable wins, it's the two list in fights, beating Smoke and Joe two out of three, and slaying the powerhouse beast known as Big George Foreman. Hope you enjoyed everyone. I intend to continue doing this series for the foreseeable future. I'll try and do at least one a month in addition to other content. And for starters, I'm going to have a strong focus on heavyweights. But there is no shortage of great champions from the past who's worth exploring in this capacity, and I think it's a fun and interesting exercise. I hope you do too. Until next time, have a wonderful night.